Hey guys and girls, Bored Nail back with you on this video. I'm going to be talking about Star Trek Picard Season 3, Episode 3. The episode is called 17 Seconds. Full spoilers from the start of this review. This episode's a bit meh overall. It's not as good as last week's, but I still prefer it to the season premiere overall, but... A lot of frustration, really, in the Picard plot this time. The best stuff definitely comes from the Raffi and Wolf plot. I'll just say, first of all, Raffi didn't actually bother me that that much this week. I thought the character was better, she was a bit more focused, and it just felt a bit more like the old Raffi from Season 1. Like, I did actually enjoy her character a bit more... And the way she was like jowling with Worf, and although that that plot itself like wasn't that exciting in the episode, I just enjoyed them as like a pairing, and we start to get some sense of some of the beats and and what what could happen in this season because it gets brought up about shapeshifters and about how the shapeshifters involved in. This, this plot with Raffi and the whole assassination. Because at one point they get a contact where they find this guy who's who's got information about the saboteur and about the, the guy who sold like the weapons. And they start questioning him. And you get a good scene of like good cop, bad cop with Wolf playing the... The bad cop, or, or sorry, the the good cop, and that stuff I really enjoyed, just because there was some good comedy in it, like Raffi expecting Morph to be the warrior than she knows him to be, and then him disappointing. I thought there was some really funny stuff in in there with those two, like just her responses, his delivery, especially of the line to do with. Yeah, we don't do beheadings anymore. I don't do beheadings. How about some tea to, to Raffi? How about some cinnamon tea? So even though the plot itself at times I thought dragged quite a lot and the actual stuff with the guy wasn't that special but I, I did get some enjoyment out of their pairing. But it hints at a whole connection to shapeshifters which immediately for Deep Space Nine fans will make you think of the character of Odo, the, the changeling, one of the main crew members. And, and it starts to hint at this sort of thing, then that could be at work as well, on the Titan, on, on the ship where Shaw and Picard is, and just the way that stuff is handled at the ep at the end of the episode. Although it's quite an interesting twist, it wasn't the best overall. There there was some sort of forced like melodrama. But just picking up with the Picard stuff, because surprisingly that stuff was like particularly bad in this episode at times with Picard acting out of character and there being like inconsistencies with him and Riker it's confirmed in the episode that then he is Jack's father as we suspected from last time and there's a decent back and forth between him and Beverly but once again there's a lot of logic holes in this. There's a lot of like him acting out of character, her acting out of character, or just inconsistencies with what we believe to be the case with Picard and just exactly why she would like hide Jack from the truth and, and why she wouldn't really tell Picard. I've, I think there's a lot of question marks on that side of the plot. Pro prob probably too many and... You get some set up with him and Riker because you get a, a past scene with them in the bar and it's sort of the night that Riker's son has been born. So once again you, you get some pretty cheap nostalgia pops for the audience like just little not nods and winks to them and um, th th that stuff is, is once again qu quite on the nose but 
generally speaking, the stuff with Riker and Picard in this episode I thought was was pretty weak. It's the weakest their stuff has been this season. They seem to be having a forced fight because Shaw, for whatever reason, leaves Riker in, in charge of the ship in this episode. It's because he gets injured, basically, and and he he says. You got us into this mess, so you're going to get us out. I'll just say the stuff with the... I forget the character's name, but the Amanda Plumbing character this episode. I thought that could have been better handled. Like, we could have got more of her character. Because having made such an impression in last week's episode, it's like she just fades into the distance this time. Because you had that big cliff- cliffhanger with the strike, like approaching them and uh, and about to attack, and and it seemed to be all out war. Well, at the start of this epico episode, Picard and crew just figure out a way to like disappear into time, into like the wormhole, so so they can avoid them. So that's the narrative. Then they're constantly trying to avoid the strike, but. As a result, we we don't get that much of the Amanda Plummer character. Like, we we just see a lot of her in cigarette smoking from time to time. So, it felt like a bit of a cheap opening to 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 the episode, and not a very satisfying payoff from last week's episode. And I guess it's just because they want to protect that character for a bit longer and and keep her around but I just thought maybe they they could have come up with something a a little bit better for that stuff but you get some conflict with Picard and Riker and and you get them debating what to do and this stuff is, is actually quite strong because it feels like a classic Star Trek debate sort of conflict where Picard is like demanding that they go after the strike and that they just take action otherwise they're risking just being killed later but Riker is trying to stand his ground and say no you're putting lives in danger here it's it's too risky to go after them we've got to play defense for a while and it just makes Picard look like a real hothead like he's not really thinking things through and he he definitely is trying to force Riker into rash decisions. So, a lot of the character stuff with them in this episode doesn't work, especially from Picard's point of view. It does feel very forced. And it did make him quite unlikable in, in this episode, I thought. Now, you get some stuff with Jack where he figures out that there's a sabotage saboteur on board and it was him who or this person that then gave them the gas leak because at one point Jack works out then they're being trailed because there's a gas leak so that's how the other ship can can, or, or how it managed to track them down but you end up with a little bit of an underwhelming reveal with that stuff then then they just, yeah, the, the, it's just this saboteur, but it's this guy who we've barely seen in the episode. Like, he's, he's hardly ever appeared. So he hasn't really factored in enough in the episode to, to really care about the, the, him being the saboteur. It is, is that revealing? You also get a lot of quite cheesy dialogue in this episode about people being legends. So you have... Wolf being re- referred to legends constantly. You have the bit with the floor and with Seven, where like sh- she reinforces, oh, you know my father. Like he wouldn't have arrested you for insubordination. So she's trying to say that that her father Geordie would have would have backed up Seven against Shaw and. Once again, there's just a lot of bad dialogue in this episode. A lot of, like, cheesy dialogue. Far too much of people being referred to to as legends. 
way in. There's there's not not a lot to really back that stuff up. Like not a lot of credible things to really connect to that stuff. So it was just bad writing mostly. The episode in general, I, I think, is fine. I think it was solid enough to watch. It sort of went in quite quickly, and it was quite exciting to watch. As I said, weirdly enough, I thought the Raffi and Wolf stuff was was better this episode than the Picard plot. But that's Star Trek Picard for another week, the third episode of Season 3. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe, and I'll return very soon with the next episode of Star Trek Picard Season 3. Share me out on social media, and I'll see you guys again soon. Goodbye.